Hi, Gary here again, and in this video I want to cover recaps in a bit more detail. So, what is a recap? Well, basically, a recap is just to find out what the pupil's done before and what they've remembered about what they've done before. Why do you need to do a recap? It's important to do a recap because you need to find out if the pupil has remembered the relevant points from what they've covered before um, so that you can then move on to the new subject. There's no point in moving on to something new if they've not uh, retained the knowledge or understanding or skills from what they've previously done. So we're dealing with part threes in particular here. You've got to remember that the pupil isn't your pupil. You've never met them before, so you don't really know what they've done and what they've not done. You can't assume that they will have been taught whatever you may have taught somebody up to this stage. Um, so the only way you can find out is by asking them questions. And in the real world, if you've got a real pupil, you might know that last week you taught them about turning left and right uh, from major to minor roads, and this week you want to teach T-junctions, but have they actually remembered much about it? Do they still remember the routine that they used uh, and the details of that routine? Um, if not, then it would be unwise to teach the new subject. So in the real world, you might decide from the real from the recap sorry, uh, that you weren't going to actually uh, teach the subject that you were planning on teaching, but you were going to go back over what they did last time until that was in place and then move on to the new subject. So the recap is quite important to make sure that whatever the objective is that you're going to set uh, is actually the correct objective uh, based on what they've remembered from what they've done before. So how would you recap? Well, recap is basically questions, um, but the questions have got to be well targeted. They've got to be relevant to um, the subject that you're going to be teaching on today's lesson, um, and you've got to try and target the question, the answer that you want, by uh, using a, an effective question. So what do I mean by that? Well, it's no use saying to the pupil, um, what do you do if you're going to turn left or right, let's say, for example you need to be a bit more specific. They can give you lots of different answers to that and all that's going to do is waste your time. You're not going to find out anything really specific. And in a part three, timing is important. You've got to remember that you've only got 30 minutes in which to teach this whole thing. And so if you waste a lot of time in the recap, um, then you're not going to have as much time to do the rest of it. So keep the recap brief, but be precise with it, be specific. So, for example, if you wanted to talk about uh, MSPSL, you might say to them, what routine did you use when you were turning left and right, and see if they can remember MSPSL. They might just give you f the, the letters there, MSPSL, so you would have to find out if they could remember what each one of them stood for. Uh, and go into each one in a bit more detail. So with the mirrors, for example, you might say, which mirrors did you check if you were going to turn left? And if they give you the right answer, you can praise them for that but then say why do we need to check the mirrors? So you're actually making sure that they've got not only the knowledge of what they're going to do but the understanding of why they did it um, before you teach the new subject and that's also going to make it a lot easier for you to teach the new subject because you know you've already covered those aspects and so in the briefing you wouldn't have to go into as much detail with that and uh, you would know that they really did understand what it was that you were teaching. So the, the recap is a very important element um, and the, the questions that you use need to be targeted. The best way to think about that is to think of the answer that you want to the question first and then invent the question. So let's say you wanted the answer to be um, something to do with position, let's say. So let's say you were wanting to talk about where would you position for turning right um, from major to minor roads. then if that's the question, the answer you're looking for is left of centre. So you would start off by thinking to yourself, well I want him to say left of centre, how am I going to get that answer? Um, so if you just said, where would you position at a junction, it's not specific enough, you need to talk about positioning for turning right. Um, so the way that you word the question is very important and as you go on you'll, you'll learn ways of um, wording the questions to get the, really the answer that you're looking for. The other thing to avoid is um, getting yes or no answers. So it's no use saying something like, do you remember that routine that you used? Because they would just say yes, and that doesn't tell you anything. And you really need to find out, have they remembered it, and are they going to tell you it? So by asking that, you might then realise and say, okay, well, what is it? But that's wasted a bit of your time. So try and avoid questions um, that start with, do you remember, or can you, t or uh, do you know about, or something like that. But start them with what, where, when, how, why, those kind of words which will then have to generate a response and if you know what the answer is you're looking for you can usually target the answer with the question 
and hopefully they'll get it right. And if they get it right, it gives you a chance to give positive feedback as well. So it all works to your advantage. So I hope that's explained a little bit about recaps and I'm going to just put a little slideshow up again like I normally do so that you can see that again at the end as a recap at the end for yourself. Thanks for listening.